if it did not have the respect and prestige, then it would not have survived a hundred years. You can't minimize the impact of uh, the journal um, through the years. It never narrowed its interest in a methodology. It never expected a unilateral focus for a particular approach. Uh, you know, sociology with Michael Schudson, um, economics, um, uh, organizational theory. It always allowed for this openness to alternative methods, to interdisciplinarity, to transdisciplinarity. Collection for each region, like South, South America, uh, Africa, Asia, and so on, Europe. Emphasis on women, um, international issues, um, research areas, different types of curriculum, um, just topics that can inform us as educators. It gave our community the voices that it needed to continue to grow. If you publish in JMCQ, that means you're one of very few scholars who have been able to publish their work in our journal. Publishing in JMCQ gives you a seal of quality. Yeah, Dan is the one that invited me to become the associate editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was the editor in chief at the time. I served as editor when the journal made the transition from snail mail, four paper copies stapled together, you know, hand or postman delivered, put it on my desk. So he invited me to become associate editor. I was kind of being persuaded by him because he's really very persistent. I guess four or five years into my editorship, we started accepting digital copies of manuscripts, you know, attached to an email. Saying that I can do the job, and at that time I'm think, I don't think that I'm ready, but I decided okay, let's give it a try and see how it works. Because he promised me it won't be too much work. It's not that much much work. Most of the work is the editor. But it wasn't long after that till we got into the full online portal submission process. This is what journalism mass communication quarterly looks like today. What's JMCQ, actually JMCQ was called, not called JMCQ, it was called Journalism Bulletin. I think I started uh, working on the board uh, back in Don Shaw's days. Um, Don Shaw had been editor right before me, but for a very short term. He had a number of other projects going. One thing that we should mention that in addition to our research articles, we also publish book reviews. Um, and that's an important part that has been with the journal. My goal uh, was to really expand the content of the journal. But of course, being the editor in chief is very different from the social editor. We did much more work. I see what he said. So, yeah. uh, each uh, editor has kind of a different personality. You know, uh, Nixon, uh, Stemple, Don Shaw, you know. So, not only were those names important in our, our theory, they were important in our journal. Uh, Guido Stemple, who had been editor for many, many years, um, once said that his goal of the uh, journal was to publish as many manuscripts as possible to help people get tenure. When I began uh, in the field back in uh, the late 80s, um, it was a very small group that published in, in the journal. And uh, it was a different time. It was a time when people were trying to recognize journalism as an academic endeavor. And so he was really motivated to uh, have a journal that represented journalism. And he did a lot of very short pieces. Uh, now, um, uh, you know, fast forward uh, several decades now, and um, I think you see many more um, international people. Mass communication and journalism is a family. We are a family. AEJMC, in all of its craziness, in all of its diversity, it is a type of family. We were welcoming and encouraging authors to kind of look outward from journalism and mass communication 
narrow, the narrow literature of JMC itself. And then beige color, but still very kind of very boring design, okay? And look outward towards complementary disciplines that were, that had emerged. I think that um, people respect it and that's why it has been able to um, be around for that long because I am sure that there are other journals that have come and gone in that, that span of time. This is the centennial issue of the journal that I'm very proud of. It's a special issue co-edited by John Nam Kim and Romero Gil de Zuniga. All right, let me tell you about the JMCQ peer training program. I was a member of its uh, debut uh, class and I was selected the first year of my PhD work. A research in, uh, uh, the journal JQ uh, has been always, um, here's what the media um, are doing and um, could we do, be doing uh, news work better? Uh, they were doing very exciting things with this research and so it brought what I was reading on paper to life. We have about a hundred scholars on our editorial board and they're listed inside the journal. JMCQ was the best journal ever. There's no other opinion here. <laughs> Name is much more like, like curvy, okay, not so straightforward and also the design is much more bold. When I entered uh, the tenure track, I was told that this is the journal that you should try to have an article published in. We need to get published in this journal and that they should listen to their leaders in the institution and should instead follow their heart and their discipline and publish in the best place. I, I can remember being a young professor at, uh, at Carbondale and you know, I, I would get something published and, and my venue of choice was always JMCQ because I knew that was the one that really reached the most members. The journal has been around for a hundred years and we are very, very, very proud of that tradition. I say that as just a small anecdote to say, fast forward some years later, and it still is the same thing. I still value JMCQ above all others because of what it brings to our family. So it is very well respected. And I think that that's one of the years that it has been around for hundred years. This is, I think, a momentous time in our society and that the journalism plays an incredible role. There's never a definitive answer because what we do, what we study is fluid, it's flexible. And we are the educators in on many levels. It, it's, it evolved. And uh, I think that that's, that's why, that's what the journal needs to be. We are, we often study propaganda, right? We study disinformation, slander, libel. We are the experts in understanding what those practices can do. We need to teach students how to think critically about what is happening in the world and how to relay that information. Our journal is the very outlet that can, in fact, showcase how authentic selves, i.e., authentic research in a variety of voices come together to bring the future of democracy that we want. And on a grander scale, we need to somehow keep the media accountable. And a place that encourages and nurtures people to try those kinds of things that might deal with new directions, new ish social issues, new media, new kinds of sampling, new kinds of measurement. Uh, it's gotta be open for that. You know, before we end this year, I want to make sure that I send my appreciation to not only the current editor of JMCQ, but all the editors of JMCQ that brought it to this point, that kept it sustaining our scholarship, that trained our graduate students, that gave us tenure, that awarded us promotion. It means so much more than I think any one editor or producer or publisher or copy editor even realized. And I just want to thank everybody who has brought JMCQ to this point.